Hi, everyone. This is your host, Kristen Howe, and I am so excited to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Andy Shaw. Now, Andy Shaw has manifested some amazing successes in his life. He set a goal of being a millionaire in two years and achieved it in six months and then became a multimillionaire two weeks later. He also built a business from zero dollars to being valued at 17 million in under three years. His first online business turned over just under a million in its first year, and he once purchased 74 properties worth over 12 million with none of his own money in just a single year. And that's why I'm excited to share Andy with you because he kind of shows you that what might seem impossible is absolutely possible. On today's call with Andy, you will discover how to never need to think positively again how to stop depression without effort and overcome fear, how to get and stay motivated, removing all bad procrastination, how to slow down so that you can actually go faster. He'll give you a structured thinking technique to remove pain before it builds up, and we'll talk about why life knocks you down sometimes and how to take back control when it does, no matter what's happening. So, Andy, I can't wait. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome to the call. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, you know, it's such an exciting thing to be able to share someone like you who, I mean, you've really, some of the things you've achieved have just been, you know, where people would look at it and go, well, that, that's not possible, and I love that. I love sharing that's not possible with people because then they go, oh, that's possible, which means it's possible for them. So, can you share with us a little bit about you, your story, how you got here, how you became aware of this, all this mind stuff, and I'll, I'll get into some cool questions and answers with you. Sure, sure, happy to. Well, basically, I was at the age of 13. My great uncle, who was a millionaire, took me to one side and basically told me my future, and he told me I was going to be a millionaire too, and I was going to go out into the world, and I was going to do some amazing things with my life, and I was going to have a truly fantastic life. From that point on, I decided that he was right. And even though that my entire peer group around me basically told me that, you know, you can't dream of, dare to dream of being a millionaire and all this sort of thing, I decided he was right and they were wrong because he already was a millionaire. So I thought he knew what he was talking about. And I just decided that that's it. I would go and create huge wealth. I went and built businesses, but I'd never, you know, at one point I had well over 100 people working for me. But I'd never made millions. And then one day, I just uh, my business mentor was having lunch with me. And uh, he just said, look, Andy, all your ideas are great, but they're all lacking one thing. They're all lacking money. And I just something inside me just flipped. And I went, oh, well, I'll, I'll go and make us some money then. And I, I just went away from that point with pure, up until that point, I just thought doing the business I was going to do was going to produce the money. And I remember what my uncle had told me, my great uncle had told me, I came away that night and I thought, I've forgotten to become rich. And it was really weird. It was like, what do you mean you've forgotten to become rich? That, that can't be real. But it was. And so I just set out, decided I would become rich, defined a goal, of set a goal of being a millionaire in two years. You know, it was just a ridiculous goal. You know, now I teach people, whatever you do, don't set a monetary goal. But the goal to me wasn't about the money. The goal to me was about the, the kudos of being able to call myself a millionaire. And so that's what I was actually getting. I was going for the attainment of it. And uh, it just it happened so fast it was, you know, untrue. And then it, was, it just happened. We made so much money. It was just basically ridiculous. And then we had a huge string of successes uh, where everything I touched turned to gold. Then the credit crunch came along and stopped play sort of thing. And, you know, I'd built several fortunes. So it wasn't where well, I bought my, built my wife's fortune and my fortune. So my fortune went. But my wife's fortune remained, and of course, I've you know, been with the same lady for 25 years this year. And so we've got an extremely strong relationship, which I designed, manifested from the start. Uh, so I sat back, you know, not needing to work. I was financially free, and I thought, well, what do I want to do with my life? And so I just sat back and decided, I think people have got it wrong on the thinking side of things. And I think I can show people a way of thinking that would help. And that was it. That's what I that's what I decided to do. So I, you know, I could have easily gone into any business at all. And I thought about it. I thought, right, okay, what what do I want to go into? Uh, I want to go into uh, this particular business, and you know, I make lots of money at it. 
And I thought, well, what will I do after I've sold that business off? Well, then I'd write the books on how to teach people how to control their mindset and how to have structured thought. And I thought, well, why don't I just do that instead? <laughs> so that's what I did. Wow. Okay, cool. I love that. And I love that something you said in there I think was really powerful, and I, and I would love for people to really hear it, is that you went, well, you know, I could I could do anything, really. I think that's the, the point of what you're teaching, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that you can actually do anything once you learn how to, you know, work with your mind, and we're going to talk about some of that. And then it's just a matter of you get to choose. So it's not like this stuff works for you if you want to be a teacher, but not if you want to be a doctor, you know, that sort of thing. So I, yes. I just I love that. I think that's what a freeing thing. Now, yes, I've it heard is. You're quite say, right. Yeah, I, I've heard you say something that I want to talk about because I it makes my head sort of go, huh? You say no thought stands still. Yes, what the correct. heck does that mean? <laughs> what is that? Well, your thoughts either hurt you or they help you they don't stand still so anything that occupies your mind has to be helping you get towards your destination or if it's not helping you get towards your destination it's dragging you away from it so wherever you want to go you no thought stands still so any thought for example little insignificant thoughts where people think well that doesn't really matter where they're angry with a driver who's pulled out in front of them or something like that well is that helping them well no it isn't therefore it's harming them and it's those sort of things. So when you can actually control every thought that goes into your mind so that you literally stop any thought that doesn't benefit you, then effectively you, you, you know, you've just removed the need to ever think positively because you, you, just, you, you have no negative thoughts. So if you remove the negative, all that's left is, is positive, but it's positive without effort. So you don't have... You know, I don't. People say to me, "Oh, you're the most positive thinking person I've ever met in my life." It's like, well, I don't think positively. They say, "Well, how can you?" And I said, "Well, I just don't think negatively. That's it. That's all I do. I, I just avoid negative thought because it doesn't benefit me." And when you can see that the, you can track it down to the benefit, and it is all just about the benefits, then you you just let it go. You know, you, you look at a doubt. If you get a doubt come up, and you look at the doubt and think, "Well, how's this helping me?" Well, it's not. Well, therefore, I don't need to think it anymore. And it just dissolves. It's, it's, it's a process. So when you learn that no thought stands still and every thought in your head either helps you or harms, harms you, then you can just stop the ones that harm you. Because you look at them and think, well, how is this benefiting me? It's not. Okay, so let me let me play a little devil's advocate here. Please do. I'm trying to see this why I, I love talking with you because I know you're like, come on, challenge me. So people listening, they're like, Andy, that sounds so easy when you say it. And it does. You know, there's this element of truth to it. When you when you hear you say it, you go, oh, yeah. And then they, you know, get off this call and they go through their day and something happens and they're, they're like, they just suddenly get swept up by the negative thoughts. And I think that's where a lot of people find themselves is realizing a million thoughts in that they're thinking negatively. It's like they don't catch it in the beginning. So what what do you you know what do you recommend for that because you're saying oh I just don't think negatively but we're not all trained yet to no. catch the first negative thought and stop it in process does that make sense absolutely absolutely you, there, there has to be a a control mechanism I mean first off you have, you have to notice that you're out of control of your thoughts and when you notice that then you you need to first bring into a in in your mind under control bring your mind under control and how you do that is there's, there's thinking techniques, for example. I mean, do you want me to go through these? They, they take, you know. Sure, that yeah, would be You want amazing. me to go through them, yeah. Yeah. The first thing is, I mean, you probably read that they talk about a 15-second technique to control your thoughts for just 15 seconds when you're feeling grateful for something. So you you think about a wonderful memory of something wonderful. And one with me is my, my little boy in an airplane when I took him flying when I was young, when he was young. And you think about this thought for just 15 seconds, and you don't allow anything but that positive thought in your mind. Now, this sounds vague and wishy-washy, but what you're doing here is you're, you're, you're instilling a control mechanism so that all of a sudden you can take back control and you can just stop negative thought. This is a transition technique. This isn't the way to do it long-term. The way to do it long-term is just to look at the thought and decide not to think it anymore. But to start with, as you say when you've got a tsunami of negative thoughts coming across your mind, you need a way of controlling it. 
So you, you, you think for 15 seconds of one positive thought. Now, when I first did this, when I first left, lost control of my mind and I had to regain it, I used this technique. I was coming back, I was living in Cyprus at the time, and I was coming back from dropping my children at school, and I was attempting to hold 15 seconds of a single positive thought because, you know, I had so much stuff going on when, you know, when I personally went bankrupt, and I had so much stuff going on in my mind, I couldn't control my thoughts, and I was trying to think of this one positive thought and hold it in my mind, and I couldn't think of the most wonderful thought, the one, most wonderful thing that happened in my life, well, one of the one, wonderful things, but I couldn't hold it for more than four or five seconds. And it just infuriated me that I was that out of control of my mind that I couldn't silence my mind for just a few seconds. So I, I pulled the car over and I just sat out, said out loud, right, I'm not leaving this spot until I've held, my, held, held one positive thought for 15 seconds. And after four or five attempts, I managed to do it. And then what happened was throughout the rest of the day and the next day, I'd as soon as I had a negativity come up and I felt bad or anything like that, and I'd hold 15 seconds of positive thought, and I probably held it for 20, 20 times on the first day, 20 or 30 times the second day, 20 or 30 times the third day. And every time I did this, I felt really good as I came out of it. And it was, it was like, wow, this is, this is good. And usually I'd, I'd got the answer to a problem just pop into my mind as well. And I thought, well, this is good. And I thought, well, hang on a minute. If, if, if I'm feeling this good after... 15 seconds, I wonder what, what I'd feel like if I could hold a positive thought for 15 minutes. So I, I, I thought, well, and I gave it a go, and I, I couldn't hold a single thought for more than about four to five minutes because my mind just drifted off. And I thought, well, hang on a second. It doesn't need to be one thought then. It can be a number of thoughts. It can be I can have a list of wonderful moments from my life. And I, look, and I made up a, what I call the grateful list, and it's a list of things I'm grateful for. And I came up with, I think it was, just under 80 things I put on this list. And so, of course, I could hold 15 minutes of being grateful, of feeling nothing but gratitude over all these different things. No problem at all. 15 minutes was just a breeze. Now, when I held that and when I, when I gained that, those 15 minutes, I had the most amazing power because I became indestructible. You know, I was dealing with bankruptcy i was dealing with you know huge problems it was all publicly going off everywhere and all this sort of thing and i was in complete control it was like i was at the most serene point of my life and as i was going through this a byproduct of what was what i was doing as i was controlling my mind was i started to see glimpses within my thoughts where i had, I had no thought at all you know i had no mind you know there was no literally the, the uh, japanese call it uh, satori uh, no mind and so I, you know, all of a sudden my mind was perfectly still without thought. And the more I practiced, the more I got to this no mind and the more I didn't need, I never needed to think about the 15 seconds because in an instant I could still my mind with, with no thought and I could sit there with no thought in my mind. Now I, I taught this to both my children and both my children can do it as well. And I've taught this to thousands and thousands of people around the world now. So what happens is you've got, a, you've got this switch so at any point, you, you could switch on no mind. And so now you can control your thoughts. So when you have a negative thought come up, you switch on no mind instantly. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a thought structure because you've, you've created a pattern in your mind. And you switch it on, and it's like, right, okay, now, now you're in the position to control the tsunami of thoughts because now they, they just sit there. And I describe to people as, I said, well, imagine yourself sitting inside your head and the thoughts are trying to rush in and you sort of reach out and put your hands there and they're not allowed to come in. And the thoughts will then just sit patiently and wait. And when you can do that, you're in control of your mind again. When you're in control of your mind, you're in control of what thoughts go in it and you can actually evaluate the thoughts and you can think consciously instead of thinking unconsciously. And by thinking consciously, all you do is you look at the thought, each thought, and go, well, is this thought helping me? Yes, no. And that, that's, that's the control element. Wow. Okay. Love that. And also, I just want to point out what you said, that you first really started working with this. You were going through, bank, you know, so you're not someone that you had success your whole life. You were going through bankruptcy and all of this stuff. You were going through some really devastating things where I think we all find it's easy to have our brains get out of control, right? Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's not like you came up with this as, as you just had made multiple millions of dollars and you were like, well, I just don't think. You know, this is, this is something you use to help you really turn things around for yourself, well, correct? Absolutely. I, well, I was in a position where I'd always thought differently to other people. I'd always thought with structured thought. And I didn't realize what it was at the time. I'd, you know, I just thought that way. And everyone, everyone used to, you know, my, everybody around me was like, well, why do you think this way? You know, why do you think like that? And, and I was thinking, well, why do you think this way? You know, when it went wrong for me financially, I looked at it and thought, well, what's going on here? You know, what's going on? What's wrong? What's different? What's changed? Because I had a string of successes. And all of a sudden, everything I touched went wrong. So I was thinking, well, what's going, what's going on? And I realized that the only thing different was my thinking. And the problem, that's when it led me to realize that as we age, more and more bugs form in our minds. More, we take these assumptions of the people around us and the education we've had, you know, because we're taught what to think, we're not taught how to think. And so we just, because everybody's got the brain, we just use it. You know, we, right. yeah, they don't, nobody's actually, your parents didn't teach you how to think. You know, the, the schools didn't teach you how to think, they taught you what to think. And so I'd always had this ability to just think differently to other people you know i'd had the drive and i'd had persistence and all that sort of thing and when i realized that something was wrong i looked at it and i looked at every aspect of my life and the only thing different was my thinking so i was able to just sit back and go all right okay well let's retake control of that i love that and you're right because no one does teach us how to think we sort of you know, we'll look at our parents and we learn what we think they're thinking, you know, so it becomes this whole, it's like a game of telephone where everything's getting all morphed and confused. So I love, Correct, I love yeah. you know, it's a way to take control. Um, okay, so so when you talk about this, is this, and I love, by the way, that you said, I don't think positively, I just don't think negatively. So is that, when you say that we never have to think positively again, is that pretty much what you mean with that? Well, yeah, the problem, the problem is with thinking positively is it takes effort. And whenever anything yeah. takes effort, it, it isn't going to work properly. You know, it needs to be effortless. You know, it's like manifesting. If you if you if you try really hard at it, it ain't going to work. Right. Whereas if you do it effortlessly, it'll it'll work every time. You know, positive thinking is correct. That is the right thing to do. But the way it's taught isn't isn't right because you can't. It's got to be something that happens automatically. And any time you need to motivate yourself, motivation is a fuel. And inspira- inspiration is like magic fuel. It will power you for the rest of your life, whereas motivation, you need to be filled up every few days. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you, if you can discover what, you're in, what inspires you, it's like I'm, I, I'm inspired and I know you are as well. So because we're inspired, we just keep going. You know, don't get me wrong, right. we have days when we're tired. But, the, you know, the, the whole point is you're on, you're on a mission, yeah, and that's, you've become inspired. When you're inspired, you don't need to think positively about it. You're just doing it. You're just getting on with it. So it happens effortlessly. So you're not saying there's anything wrong. You do want to be a person who thinks positive thoughts. It's just you use all of these techniques to get to the point where that's what is effortless. Right now, what's effortless for most of us is thinking negatively. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I can do that all day long. (laughs) (laughs) Right? So I yep. guess the the good thing about that is you're already good at having certain thoughts be be effortless. Now you just need to flip it around so that it's positive ones that are effortless. Well, and the thing is that we're already doing it. We're already we're already thinking effortlessly, positively right. about certain things. You know, it's like we don't you know we don't think negatively about going to the shops. We just go to the shops. It's effortless. You know, and it's we're doing it right. You know, we're 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 all designed. We're, we manifesting is what we do. That's how we live. It's just not notice. We don't, we don't notice when we're doing it over little things. Yeah, we we think it's all just to do with big stuff. It's everything. It's everything in our lives. Every every everything we see, everything we do, everything we touch is all about manifesting. And so when you can learn to do get some amazing stuff effortlessly as well, I was on a cruise. But I said to uh, my business development manager, I said next year we need to find somebody who can introduce us to the right people over in the US. We need to find uh, somebody that can introduce us to a higher level on the speaking side of things. And we need to find somebody that can introduce us to the TV and the uh, magazines, everything like that. And so that was it. I didn't give it another thought. So in in other words, I set my intention. And what happened was uh, we went on the cruise. The first two people we spoke to You know, one of them is connected right at the highest level of Hollywood and all this sort of thing. Another one's 
Uh, she speaks on stage to 25,000 people. She's regularly invited another lady. She deals in all of the media. And we, these were the first, two of them were the first two people we spoke to, and the other lady we spoke to on the second day. Well, you know, that's, that's manifesting, because we did it effortlessly. I set the intention, I let go of it, and guess what? There it was. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, and it's it's such a perfect example. Okay, so now a lot of people are struggling with depression or just really, really, you know, negative states of being. So it's not just negative thoughts. You know, it's it's a real depressed energy. So yeah. you say that you can stop depression without effort and you can overcome fear. Talk to me about that. Okay. Depression is created by the mind, Yeah. You know, when you actually, you, you've, by not thinking correctly or not being trained how to think correctly, you allow depression in and you allow your ego to control. Now, it's an unconscious allowing, so it's not something that you can say, well, aren't you silly? You've let this in, right? Well, no, you can't say that aren't you silly to anyone because it's something that's a byproduct of uh, the chaotic way our minds work. And so, when you actually can actually slow your thoughts down and you understand that no thoughts stand still and you can, you can use the trigger, which we talked about, where you can switch your mind still for a second, then you can start to analyze what you're depressed about and you, you can look at it from a, a benefits point of view and you just analyze the benefits and it's like, well, I'm depressed that I've just split up with my, my husband or my wife or something like that. Well, okay then. Well, how is it helping you being depressed about that? Well, it's not. Okay. So if it's not helping you, what is the point of doing it? Well, uh, uh, and you're starting to question yourself. And, of course, I know this sounds incredibly simplified, but that's exactly what it is. It is simple stuff. I mean, my my favorite testimonials are when people send me emails saying, you know, I've, I've, I've been depressed, I've been clinically depressed for 31 years, and, you know, I've only been reading your stuff for a week, and I, I'm, I'm not depressed anymore. It, when you actually are back in control of your mind, you can choose to not be depressed. Now, you think, well, that's, that's too simplified, Andy. Well, it's the same thing as seasickness. You can choose to not be seasick if, you, if you're in control of your mind because you just look at it and there are ways of actually stopping it because you can actually just talk to yourself and say, well, how is this helping me? Right? And as, when you actually recognize that the thoughts are coming in and they're not helping you, you just slow them down. You look at them. You think, well, is this helping me? Yes, no. Right, because there is no grey. No, it's not helping me. Therefore, I won't think that anymore. Then the next thought comes in, and you think, well, is this helping me? Yes, no. And what happens is you're, you're creating structures. So the same thought can't be smacked in your face too often. And what happens is your ego saves that one up, and it, it waits for a time when you're weak to throw it back at you at that time. Because you've created this thought structure where you realise that that thought is insanity for you to continue thinking it that it takes no effort to you know it's like a uh, eating cardboard as a child i'm sure we all stuck cardboard in our mouth you know we stuck cardboard in our mouth and we tried to chew it and we went yeah, there's no point in chewing that it doesn't taste very good so we learned a thought structure that cardboard was no good so all you're doing with uh, depression is you're creating that thought structure because you're analyzing your thought seeing that it's of no value to you and then once you've noticed it's not va- no value, you've, you've created the power of awareness, and the awareness means that you won't repeat the same mistake. Now, it takes no effort to not repeat that mistake again because you've created a thought structure, a really tiny one that basically says, oh, if I think that uh, she doesn't love me, well, how does, how does that help me? Well, it doesn't. So you don't think it anymore. Uh, you just you drop the thought. Moving on to the fear thing. Have I covered that okay? Yeah, 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 it's great. Yeah. I, it's almost like, and again, you know, tweak tweak what I'm about to say, but it's almost like when we become aware of the fact that it's not helping us, is that something that, that begins to shift the thought in itself? Does that make sense? Yeah, it is. It's exactly what it is. You, As you notice, it's not helping you. You think, well, you know, I, I say to people, well, well, just ask yourself, well, why am I doing this then? What, where's the benefit to me? You look at animals you know, moving on to fear for a second because that, that helps explain this. An animal isn't afraid like a human is afraid. They're either living in the present or they're dealing with the situation. So 
So an animal, a gazelle or something like that, is sitting there eating, you know, standing there eating grass, and if a lion comes along, it's running away. Yeah, it's aware, and it's looking around all the time. Humans have got this, created these, uh, this mess in their mind, where they worry about what's going to happen, the fear, and you know, when you actually, they don't, they, you know, all the monsters in the closet. So they, there's, there's corners of their mind where they think, oh, I can't go there, I can't think about that. You know, because you know, every, I think everybody has had some horrible experiences in their lives and things that they don't want to think about or things from their past or things they're worried about will happen in the future. But when you actually go and look at them and you take out, you open up the cupboard door and you have a look inside of what might happen or what if I, what if I lose my job? What if I lose my house? What if I, what if this happens or what if that happens, you know? And you go and explore them and you take it to the worst case scenario of what could possibly happen and you think, well, could I actually survive this? The answer is always yes. You know, unless somebody's killed you or something like that, well, then there's, you know, there's, there's nothing more you can do at that stage. You know? Right. you know, the game's over sort of thing. So, you know, the fear of death is ridiculous because you're not there <laughs> anymore sort of thing. But if you, if you look at a fear and you, you take it apart and you, you know, let's say, uh, I'm going to lose my house. Right, okay, well, g- let's go and look at that scenario. So what's going to happen? You know, and you go and look at what happens with all of that. And then you go, right, well, could I, could I live with this? Well, yes, I could, okay. And then what happens is you go, well, what's the most likely thing to happen? And you go and look at what the most likely thing is to happen. And let's say losing the house is 10 on the scale. But the most likely thing to happen is, you know, you have to come into an arrangement with your mortgage company or something like that. And that's a four on the scale. Well, that's the likely thing to happen. So, you know, you suddenly realize that the, a four is okay and you can deal with it. Now, as soon as you take fear out of the equation by experiencing the fears, by going and looking at them, you've taken the, the pain out of it, the emotion out of it. And by taking the emotion out of it, you can now deal with it in a workman style, logical way. So you're unattached to it, and therefore you're not living in fear. And by living in fear, you're creating, you're manifesting bad stuff. Yeah? So when you can take the emotion out of it, and you can just go, right, okay, well, that's what's likely to happen. Well, I don't want that. I want a better scenario. Right, okay, well, now when you're not emotional, you're not attached to it happening, and you're, you've already accepted whatever's going to happen, you're able to just tread carefully and make moves that basically end up with you getting a better result than you would have done. So you're not manifesting the bad stuff to happen. You're now only doing things that help you. So you're not doing anything that's going to harm you. And, you know, it's a, it's a process of tiny little thought changes which effectively remove fear. You know, I say to, I say to people, look, fear is irrational. We all know that fear is irrational. But the problem is because we haven't been taught how to think, we can't remove fears from our minds. You know, an ex-girlfriend of mine used to say, you just never worry. You, you're not afraid of anything. And I said, well, I just don't see the benefit in worrying. I don't see the benefit in being afraid. Because when there's something to look at that could go wrong, you go and look at it. So there's no need for me to worry about it. Where, where's the benefit in me worrying about it? Where's the benefit in me being afraid of it? So when you actually can take those little those problems and you break them down to benefits, there, there is no benefit. So you, you stop worrying. I mean, I've got a testimonial come in the other day from a, a lady uh, and she said one of the people who are on my membership site had just died and he, he'd been in personal development for 50 years and he said I've never experienced so much peace in my entire life since starting out on you know doing the bug free minds process because he'd been able to take worry out of his life and take fear out of his life because once you've once you've evaluated it you, you know, you see it as irrational. Or once you see it as irrational, you don't have to put any effort into not being afraid or not worrying because it, they, they just dissolve. And like I said before, you hear you say it and there's just this element of truth to it where it's like, yeah, of, co- of course. And so you, you are definitely speaking to that sort of inner truth and in all of this. Okay, talk to me about motivation. You mentioned it before, that there's the difference between motivation and inspiration. You say, you know, that there's a way to get and stay motivated and remove all bad procrastination, which I guess my first question is, is there such a thing as good procrastination? Sure, there definitely is. We all use good procrastination. We just don't realize we're doing it. When we're unsure about where to go, a decision, uh, let's let's try and uh, give it a a different take on it. When you don't know what to do, uh, a friend of yours, Dr. Robert Anthony, said this, and I think it's bang on. When you don't know what to do, 
you should do nothing at all. Yeah, because when you do nothing at all, you're you're waiting for inspiration to strike. You've you've given your mind all of the data that it needs, and your subconscious mind is basically filtering out what needs to happen. And this is this is good procrastination. So at the point where you can just give it more data, yeah, or sit back, or you go, uh, you're on a subject, you can't figure out the answer, walk off and go and do something else. Uh, come back to it uh, in ten minutes' time when the inspiration strikes, or uh, in four days' time or five days' time, it, inspiration will strike. As long as you've given it enough data, inspiration will strike. This is good procrastination because you're actively procrastinating, waiting for your subconscious mind to spit the answer out to you. And the answer comes and you, you feel it. I, I describe it as like uh, you've got a bit of rope tied to your rib cage, and all of a sudden the inspiration strikes and you feel compelled to act and you are dragged forward by this bit of rope. And you just, that's, that's active procrastination. That's good procrastination. You've procrastinated, but you've given it to your subconscious mind to think about. You've kept supplying it with more data about more ideas and that sort of thing. And then your subconscious mind has just inspired you with how to get there. And you're off. So yes, that's, that's good procrastination. You know, here's the biggest problem of all. People don't actually know what they want. You know, people are on a uh, walkabout their entire lives. They don't actually know where they're going. They're, you know, most people, think they want to be financially free or they want to find the ideal partner or they whatever they want to do. And they're on this journey, but they don't know it specifically. Your, your subconscious mind is like a travel agent. It's almost exactly like a travel agent. And if you can define exactly where you want to go, uh, then your travel agent will get you there. So in other words, most people around the world will go, I want to go somewhere hot and sunny. Well, there's no place on earth that's hot and stu- hot, it's called hot and sunny, so your travel agent can't take you there. Uh, you have to define that I want to go to Miami Beach, I want to stay at one of the hotels on Miami Beach, and I want to spend this amount of money, and I want to fly with Virgin Airways. Now, that's a great direction to a travel agent. If you go into a travel agent and you said, well, I want to go somewhere hot and sunny, and you gave him no other information, well, it's useless. So the first point is you've got to know where you want. Now, when you know what you want out of life, and whatever it is, because we've all got it. Sometimes it's, a, you know, let's take buying a new car or something. You don't know what car you want, then all of a sudden you know what car you want. You've now become inspired to go and get that car. You've just inspired yourself to make that happen. And your goal, you, you become an expert manifester then. You, you just you go and make that happen. You, know, you do all that, you fill in all the details. But what people, up until this point, they, they need motivation to do it, and motivation doesn't actually produce the results. Ins- inspiration does. So what you're looking for is you're looking to find what inspires you. So the, the secret is to find what you want to do with your life, because once you know where you want to go, you go and experience your death, and you actually look at your death and go, well, and you work it back from there, so you have everything you want in life. So you've already had it. You know, everyone says we're manifesting. Uh, you've got to have had it first. Right. Well, you go to your death and you, you look at what life you want. You know, for example, with myself, I looked at my death and went, OK, so this is what I want to have had happen in my life. Let's track it, trace it back from there. Well, I'm inspired and every step I take takes me towards that. Whereas I don't wander off. I don't wander off and go somewhere else. And because I've wandered off, I don't really know where I was going. And so now I need motivation to get me back on track. Well, no, because I'm inspired. I know where I'm going. So, you know, that's the problem. People, are, people set out uh, uh, on their journey in life with no sense of direction. So they just get in their car and they go. And then they, they get lost and they, they, they need to be motivated to go and do something again. Well, that's because they're not inspired yet. Because as, as soon as you're inspired, you, you know, you, you don't need motivation. You know, you might need some mornings after you've had a bit too much to drink or something like that. You might need a little bit of motivation. But you don't on the whole because you're inspired. You know where you want to go. When you don't know where you truly want to go, every step is basically a wasted step because you, you could be going the opposite direction. People just don't know because they don't know where they want to go. People don't know what they want. Okay, you say that there is a way for us to slow down so that we can actually go faster, and I think that's just huge. How do we slow down so we can actually go faster? Well, the first thing to realize is that rushing doesn't work. Yeah, everybody. If you look at everybody around you, you'll see that everybody's rushing. Everybody's in a rush to do this, and you know they want that magic bullet that's going to make them rich. Or basically, they're all busy and they're all rushing. 
Uh, and then you actually look at the success rate in the world, and the success rate is minuscule. You know, do you know do you, the odds of actually somebody becoming worth a mere one million dollars, seven hundred fourteen to one, and a million dollars is a lot of money, but it isn't a lot of money. And the odds against it are seven hundred fourteen to one. You know, ninety nine point nine nine percent against chance. Oh no, sorry, seven hundred forty one fourteen to one. It's ninety nine point nine 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 percent if you go for the ultra high net worth individual. So people are rushing but rushing doesn't do it so if rushing doesn't do it what does well you know you every year it goes by you're looking at time you think oh this year's going fast you know here we are we're at the end of this month already and you know we're two three months in two three four months into a year oh this is going fast well the the problem is that it's in your mind so because you're rushing you're manifesting more rushing in your life so what you have to do is you have to forcibly slow it down and by slowing down you actually speed up because things come to you rather than you going to get them. So you, you set your intention. You know, all work should be done in the mind anyway. You do the work in the mind, and the rest of your time, you're just going around picking up the results that your mind has created. And so by learning to slow down, you allow your mind to do the work for you. You know, I had an example today. I, we, we booked a holiday to come to Orlando in the autumn. And... Because of the way I left it, and I meant to book it last week, and I didn't book it last week, and fortunately I didn't, because uh, I'd looked at it and thought, well, well, I'll get around to it next week or the week after, something like that. And my son came home, and he uh, he had a holiday, a school trip he wanted to go on. And because he went to, wanted to go on that school trip, it meant that I couldn't have gone on the holiday I wanted to go on in the week I did. So because we then had to move it to some other time, we ended up saving 25% on it. But because I was doing it slowly, I wasn't in a rush, I wasn't worried, I wasn't stressed, I wasn't doing it, automatically it worked out better, you know, because I'm not in a rush. I don't do anything in a rush. If anybody asks me a question, if you ask a bank manager, you know, I need a decision, yes or no, then the answer is no. You know, that's the way people should be. Everything should be done as slowly as possible, because when you do things slowly, you actually get further faster. People, people are so busy doing things reading the next book, rushing to get to the end of the next book and that sort of thing. But they don't make any progress. You know, the, the secret isn't to get to the end of the book. The secret is to make change and make progress happen in their life. And that's the difference. And when you learn that you, there is no need to rush because rushing doesn't actually work, uh, you can slow it down. You can uh, basically you go a lot faster. I know it's a paradox, you know, it, it, well, this goes against the grain because if I'm doing less, then that will actually make me go faster. Yeah, that's how it works. If you rush, then you'll get more rushing, and you won't get anywhere. Right. Yeah, you know, it's so funny, because you, as you started talking about it, I was like, oh, that's, it's so true. Whenever I feel that pressure to rush, I absolutely, one million percent, slow myself down. I start making mistakes. You know, I'm like, if I'm rushing to get out the door, I drop the keys. I forget to set the alarm. You know, all of that stuff. So that makes complete sense. Bang on, Act yeah. Slow ourselves down. Okay, so... Now, I, I, this is really important because I think people a lot of times and a lot of the people listening, and this is a, an exceptional group of people that, that tune into these calls, and they're all absolutely and completely dedicated to themselves, which I think is just amazing. A lot of them, though, struggle with, and we get emails about this, you know, why, as just when I feel like I'm starting to, you know, have movement in this area of my life, why does something come up and knock me down? So you say that, you know, life does knock you down sometimes, but that there is a way to take back control no matter what's happening to us. So can you, can you help us with that? Sure. The first thing to realize is, you know, it, depending on where your starting point is, you know, uh, when I, when it was all, when everything was going uh, according to plan, and we were, we were literally printing money like there was no tomorrow with everything we touched. It was, you know, it was great, right? And it worked. And then for about a period of 18 months, it all started to go wrong when the credit crunch happened, and you know, the, the business model we were in, we, you know, banks stopped lending and that sort of thing. So then you're, you're fighting to try and find solutions and that sort of thing. You can't find it because basically the, you know, the, the, the whole thing had been dismantled from the inside if you like and what happens is you end up then manifesting a load of bad stuff it doesn't travel at the speed of light it travels at the speed of crap so what happens is you get all the bad stuff you've manifested is going to come going to take time to come out but what happens is if you just keep doing good stuff 
and you just you're not bothered you're unemotional about what's going on what's happening you're able to just carry on going through it and then eventually good stuff just starts to come and you know i said i said to my wife after we were about 18 months afterwards and she said god this is this is bad stuff keeps coming and i said oh, don't worry i said let's look at what's actually gone on and we've got loads of good stuff coming now i said now as the year goes on more and more good stuff and within uh, about two years it was virtually all good stuff and now it's almost 100% good stuff. It's very rare we get anything bad at all because we just kept doing it right for a long enough period of time, you know, because this stuff takes a while to roll out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when someone still like, oh, why is this happening to me? I was just starting to... What's the first thing that they can do to sort of shift their brain? Is it going back to that yes, holding the, the positive thought? You know what I mean? Yes, it's moving their state, isn't it? You know, because their state at the moment is... You know, they're angry at what's going on. They're angry at the situation. You, you know, that's not going to help you. So it's like, well, slow it down. Well, well okay then. Well, uh, it's acceptance, acceptance of what is. Whatever's going on is, you know, what's going on. You know, it's, you, can, you can do everything you can to create a better outcome, but you have to accept what is. You know, every one of the, uh, the, the spiritual teachings will always teach uh, acceptance of what's happening and surrender to what will happen. And if you can master those two, well, basically, you've got a great life coming. And that's, you know, it's very easy to say in a sentence, but it's uh, <laughs> quite tricky to actually master in life. But when you can actually learn acceptance and you can actually learn to surrender, nothing can really affect you. You're, you're, you're bulletproof. Uh, and it's, they're, they're thought techniques. Acceptance and surrender are thought techniques. And it's a process of evaluation. You look at it and you see that, the non-acceptance come up, and as you see the non-acceptance come up, it's, well, how is this helping me? Well, it's not helping me. Okay, so why am I letting it come into my life? What, why, what can I do to prevent it? What can I do to stop this? Well, I've got to accept it, and I've got to surrender to the outcome. But I'm going to do everything I can in my power to make sure that uh, everything I do gets me the best possible outcome. So you do everything you can in your power, but you just accept What's out of your power? What's out of your control? You know, people say, well, I want, I want other people to like me or something like that. Well, that, they're not in your control. Only you are in your control. You know, the only thing that you can truly control in, in the world is your, how you think about things. So you get that right. And when you get that right, by mastering yourself, you eventually, you're, you're a master of, you become a master of everything. So you, you, you work on your own mind, you get that right, and then you stop the irritations. You know, it's not like a one-size-fits-all, but there's a thought structure, and the thought structure is, is this helping me, or is it harming me? If it's harming me, well, what benefit is to me then? Well, it's no benefit. Well, if it's no benefit, well, why am I thinking it then? And then you just ask, well, why am I thinking this? Well, how's this helping me? And it's just little things like that by asking the why. You know, when you're, when you're bringing up children, because we all, we all were naturally successful. We all had minds that were absolutely spot on when we were children. And what, you know, when a child says, well, why do you do that? Why do you do it like that? Why do it like that, Daddy? Why do it like that, Mummy? Right? And it's very irritating for a parent at times because, like, well, because I said so, right? Because the parent doesn't actually know because the parent's got the wrong right. thinking structure as well. So all you have to do is you have to become that child again that you once were. Well, why am I thinking like this? Well, how is that benefiting me? You question yourself. Why are you, que why are you doing things the way you're doing it? And as you question, you, you become aware. And as you become aware, you remove the power of the unconscious thought that you've allowed into your mind through bad programming. And that's it. That change, change just happens. You know, it, it happens effortlessly just by you becoming aware. So all you have to do is become aware of your thoughts. And as you become aware of your thoughts, you, they dissolve themselves because you look at them and go, well, that's ridiculous. There's no point. There's no benefit in me thinking that. Uh, as, and as it happens, you just, you know, it, life gets easier. You stop creating pain. Mm. Oh, I love that. You stop creating pain. That, that's amazing. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm curious about. Um, I love to find out what's possible for everybody who's listening. So what I, if you could take a few minutes and share, and I know there are so many, but if you could share some of the amazing turnarounds that you've seen from people who have applied what you teach, that would be really, really helpful to us. Okay. It depends on what people want. You know, if people are looking for their perfect partner. For example, I've got a, a friend, a student of mine, uh, and he came to me and he said, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to find the perfect partner. How do I do it? 
And I said, well, you design the perfect person you want in your life. And I told him the story about how I designed my wife to come into my life. You know, I was looking for the perfect partner and how, how I designed her. And he said, well, how did you do it then? I, I told her I wrote down every detail about what I wanted in the person, what she would want in me, and everything like that. And I went through, one by one, each of the each of her attributes, and I covered all of the, the bases. And uh, I said to him, I said, that's all you've got to do. You've got to design the person you're looking for. You know, you've got to design that person into your life. So what he did was he took it on board and he just went through and he designed uh, this person into his life, the perfect person. And he created a design that had, I think it was 100 and... He had 187 attributes, and he covered everything. He covered, you know, what personality, what she liked to do, and everything like this. And by the time he'd finished it, and the person was in his life, she had 184 of them. So, you know, 99% almost. So that was that's pretty cool success. His financial, there was a guy in Australia. He was struggling in his, in his business, and uh, he'd been working at different things for a long, long time. And then what happened was he just went through the process... In the six months of going through it, he made 10 times as much money as he'd made in the previous, I think he said 10 years, but it might have been eight years, something like that, because he, he just stopped getting in his own way. He stopped creating pain. And when you stop creating pain and you just, you, 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 all you're doing is you're getting out of your own way, effectively, you just, you know, life becomes easy. Those are fantastic, and I love that you sort of vary them because, you know, people are really looking to manifest different things, but I think that the point that you just made is really powerful. Once we get out of our own way, because as you said, we're already masters at manifesting, and so really, you know, it's us being in our own way that makes things seem painful and full of struggle. Is that is that a good way of looking at it? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, amazing. And I just, I love everything that you share because it, it feels like something we can do. And so, you know, thank you for that. You, you give us such a incredible information, but not just information. I, you know, I feel like we can all leave the call and start applying this in our lives. So that's, that's really, really important. Obviously, there's so much more to learn for, I mean, we could sit here and talk for, you know, weeks. And what what I get excited about is is helping everybody who's listening actually be able to do what you're talking about and take control of, of their life, take control of their thoughts. There's so much more to learn from you. I, so I asked you to create a special offer for everyone who's listening to the call. I highly encourage you, everyone, go to Andy's special offer right now to experience it for yourself. Andy, if you could talk us through what we'll find there, that would be fantastic. Sure. That what I had to look at was I had to look at how people worked, how their minds worked. And the, the problem is that people try and create success by putting software onto a computer that's already bunged up with a load of junk on it. And so what I had to do was I had to show people how to get their mind back to the mindset they had when they were a child. When they were a child, they were able to learn to walk, and learning to walk is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. But you did it automatically, without thought, you know, you saw somebody walking and you just did it. And it's, you know, to, to, to do something, you have to trip over four or five hundred times to do it. An adult could never do it. So I, I recognized that the successful people in the world, they had this mindset and they'd never lost it, whereas everybody else had allowed society to program them. So the first part of the process is taking people's minds back to where they were once, once upon a time, where their mindset was absolutely pure. And so all I did was I showed people how to remove all fear, worry, anxiety, depression, stress, overwhelm, all of the things that people say, oh, well, they're difficult to remove. No, they're not. They're just a process. They're just a step-by-step. Each point is removed one at a time. And when you've got your mind into that position, you've got it what I call bug-free. And so your mind is effectively not creating pain, not putting any barriers in your way. Then it's time to move on to the next bit, which is to go and create whatever you want from life. So you're looking to become a master manifester. Now, we're all automatically, we manifest. But I I looked at it and thought, well, you know, I looked at goal setting and everything, and I thought, well, why is it? What's wrong? Why why is it only 3% of people set goals and that sort of thing? And it's because there was this association with work and pain that was wrapped into goal setting. And so what I did was I, I took it apart and I showed people how... How they, how they actually 
design they can design their life automatically and and easily and by doing it automatically and easily you create what you want instead of creating a mess and it and it's no and there's no pain so in other words it, you remove the work element of it and all of a sudden it's like designing it's like drawing when you're a child you know you you don't mind how many times you have to draw something and that's the second part of the process is is basically creating the designs for your life and transitioning from the lot you know so that you can put in place like an antivirus to protect your mind as you go out into the rest of, for the rest of your life so you've always got these things that as as your ego that messes your mind up basically comes back at you in a few years time or you know if something terrible happens in your life a, a really bad thing happened or something like that you you need a way to be able to snap yourself straight back to having a clear mind again and so all of the the second part of it is really giving you those sort of transition techniques that allow you to get back to a normal mindset when something really bad happens. So it's a protection. It's like an insurance to ensure that your life becomes easier and more certain. And so the whole process really cleans you up, gives you a way of creating exactly what you want from life and a way of finding out exactly what you want from life because that's the problem. Most people don't know what they want from life. And when you've found those things out, it then gives you some, like an antivirus, like a protection against you ever going back and allowing the way that you were programmed to come and get you again. And that's it, really. It's, it's, it's simple. It's just one step at a time, a little bit at a time, just uh, dripping it into your mind. You look at the bugs and you'll spend more time thinking about what I've done than you will reading it. It's, it'll be... A lot of things, there's a lot of things people have read before, but it's just the missing links to making them actually practical. Because what my, my dad was a teacher, and he, what he did was, you know, one day when I was, a, I was a child, I couldn't learn something, and he just showed me it in three or four different ways. And I got it straight away, and I said, well, why didn't my teacher teach me to do it? And he said, well, they, they don't realize that you've got to teach it so that everyone can get it. And so when I wrote this process, I wanted to teach it so that virtually everybody could get this and they could actually apply it into their life and make all the difference, make a change. Wow. I, yeah, I love that. Okay, so when people start using your program, what are the biggest benefits that they could expect to start experiencing uh, right away as well as over time? People don't even realize that they're not in control of their thoughts. And the first benefit you, you is, a, is like an, a, a, an awakening that almost happens you know, within the first few chapters and all of a sudden you, you start to feel it's really it's like an electric buzz because all of a sudden you're starting to wake up. Because you don't really, people, most people really don't realize they're actually asleep. They're sleeping through life. You know, I call it the waking sleep of the human race where most people are asleep and they don't realize they're asleep. That's so the first thing you get is you, you get this sort of awareness. You've been asleep. And when you, when you uh, realize you've been asleep, it's, well, now you can start to do things on purpose. Then what happens next is I then... Poke the, point, poke the pain on worries, and I show people how to completely remove worry from their life. So you stop worrying about whether you're going to have any money or you're, whether you're going to find love or whatever the, you worry about. That just goes. You know, it's not. This isn't like a, you know, well maybe it'll go. This this happens. This just happens, and it happens very comfortably, very easily. And then you enter this total peace and tranquility where basically you enter a serene existence where you're basically you're bulletproof. Nothing can harm you. You let go of the past if you've got problems from your childhood or something like that or you're angry with an ex-partner or something. All of that goes very, very quickly and you, you just get to a point of contentment, peace and serenity of where you are. You're not, you know, that's without you going and creating anything. You become happy, yeah? It basically gives you happiness because... Mm. Well, people said to me, you know, well, how can you be so happy all the time? Well, I said, well, how, how can you not? You know, because to me that was like, well, the benefit of me not being happy is. So when you, when you learn to control, because happiness is a choice, it's just the point of knowing how to turn on the happiness side of things. So, yeah, it gives happiness. And once you've got the happiness, uh, then you're able to just go and create what you want without creating pain. So you'll get all of that. I mean, people people say to me, Oh, I haven't even bothered doing the second part of the process yet because I'm too, I'm enjoying the first part too much. Right? People literally love the first part because they, they're just serene. They're just, you know, they've never, they've never had elements of peace in this way since they were, you know, under 10 years old. So the big, 
first part of the benefit to me it was like well now I you know obviously people are going to want me to show them how to go and create fortunes and all this sort of thing but the uh, people tell me from feedback and you know if anybody goes to the site there's hundreds of testimonials on there from people saying it's amazing and you know it, it does all of the sort of thing that you know, people have always wanted from uh, personal development and self help but they've never been able to able to get and all I do is I explain things in a way that just breaks things down and it, it's simple you know it's it's just a process and that's you know people get well they just feel happy yeah which you know it's so funny and i've talked about that uh, many times we're really truly we're all seeking you know all the other stuff is great but we're seeking that happiness and peace and then Absolutely. the the fortunes and the mate and all of that that's that's all bonus like that's the cherry on top of the sunday so the fact that that is, you know, one of the biggest, most immediate benefits is pretty pretty exceptional. Andy, you've been just brilliant. I love being able to share you with everybody. Um, do you have any final words? You know, as we go off today, what is it that you absolutely want us to to know or hear or have in our have in our minds as we as we head off? Rushing. Look at when you rush. Yeah. See it that there's no value in it. If you can learn to slow down, you're going to create a lot more time in your life and you're going to have a much better life as you do it. You know, when you actually learn to slow down, you're just going to free yourself up so much more and you will just experience things that you're going past every day of your life that are wonderful that you're not noticing because you're rushing too much. And if you can get one thing from this, it's learning to slow down and you'll, you'll accomplish far more than you've ever done. Wow, I love that. Perfect. Everyone listening... Really, really pay attention to that because, I, you know, I, as I said, Andy, when you first mentioned it, I was like, oh, my God, that's absolutely, like, I saw it in my own life. So I'm sure everyone can easily see that reflected in their own. So let's all slow down and, and create this great sort of space for amazing manifesting. And, Andy, I have to thank you again. Everyone listening, you're all absolutely extraordinary. And, you know, just for me to be able to do this and share amazing people like you, Andy, and be able to be here with this incredible group of people, it's, it's just a gift, and I thank you all for it. And until the next time, keep manifesting, everyone. Bye-bye.